All right, let's see it. Hello, you absolute legends. Trackmania is, in my opinion, one of the greatest racing games of all time. It's a relatively simple racing game, but the mechanics make the game a real treat to play. And these mechanics are just real? complex enough to produce a host of emergent techniques and strategies that give competitors enough depth to really sink their teeth into. Trackmania Wild seems record. perfectly designed for time trials. And because the game is so beautifully well made, it has facilitated a bustling competitive scene for well over a decade. Players sometimes spend hundreds or even thousands of hours on a single track, trying mm -hmm. to achieve the perfect line. Almighty and because Hefes. that perfect line requires such immense precision oh, and is why so not hard to actually attain, it allows the true skills of players to adequately shine. Those that can control their car better and can produce lines that are closer to optimal will get a faster time than those who can't. And this is what makes competition in track mania so great. But over the past couple of years, oh a new kind God. of strategy has begun Satisfying. to emerge. And it's a style of play that seems to spit in the the very face of the spirit of the game. This new strategy seeks to strip away almost everything that makes the game great, and the problem is that this new method seems to work. By I using custom-built about... tools and brute force, you can let a computer distill a run down to just a handful of inputs. You can figure out the perfect sequence and timing of keyboard presses that would produce the fastest run in the fewest amount of inputs. Now, instead of trying to control your car as best you can, all you need to do is memorize just a few inputs, hit them at the right time, time and you'll achieve a new record. In fact, this method is so simple, you could literally do it without even looking at your car. What? You can just watch the timer, hit the buttons when you know you're supposed to, and the game then becomes less like a racing game and more like a rhythm game. This new strategy has already resulted in one of the most famous world records in the game's history being beaten with relative ease, and this no is way. surely just the beginning. This raises an important philosophical question. What really is the point of Trackmania competition? Is it just to get the fastest time, no matter what or how? Or is it to see who the best racer is when playing the game as intended? Ultimately, after causing much of a stir, this controversial new strategy was banned from use on the competitive leaderboards. Yeah, but the reason it was banned is probably different than what you would think. In this video, we will take a quick look at this new strategy, and it would be very interesting to know your thoughts as well. Does this ruin the game, or is it just another valid way to play? No. I'm calling it right now. It ruins the game in every single way. Why would you do this? That makes it so much more boring. Um, it also is going to just... Well, to be fair, okay, let's be honest about it. It only is going to be very impactful in very, very short maps that have, like, six inputs or something. But, like, it's still kind of sucky. I, I really hope you enjoy. Controller. Now, Legends, I am super excited because this video has an amazing sponsor. AG1 oh is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. AG1 is jam-packed with so many high-quality ingredients that are essential to good health. Oh my god, he's staring like at vitamins, my soul. minerals, antioxidants, probiotics, and many more. As you guys know, I'm dealing with a lot of stress right now leading up to my trial next month, so I've been trying to stay as healthy as possible by trying to oh, sleep yeah, more, a, eating better, exercising, and taking the, AG1 every day. The Donkey Kong AG1 guy, right? supports stress recovery, your immune system, gut health, and it also enhances focus and energy. <clears throat> I've tried other powdered greens in the past, but they always tasted terrible, which is why I could never keep them up. But I can honestly say AG1 is by far the best tasting I've ever had. I reckon- Chat, think about this. My next stream, I play Trekmania with the main monitor off. I only look at second monitor, see if I can beat the game. I recommend having it first you thing see in the these morning. Tracks. It's such a positive way to start the day. If you value your health, please try AG1 today. Just click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen and get a free welcome kit with your first subscription. This includes a year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2, five AG1 travel packs, a steel canister, and a pretty cool shaker as well. Pretty cool shaker Track in the Trackmania is a deterministic game, yes. meaning that if you do the okay. exact same inputs, you'll achieve the exact same results. True. This is important when it comes to verifying replays to make sure they aren't cheated. But in normal play, this really doesn't seem to apply. No one can play perfectly, so you're never going to do the same run twice. Real? When steering with a joystick, there are over 100,000 possible input values, and the game is responding to your inputs 100 times per second. So it's just quite frankly impossible to perform the same oh. run twice. Did you 
even input. the slightest difference in inputs can result in pretty significant deviations. This is one of the things that makes Trackmania competition so great. Rolling. It rewards precision, and because perfect precision is essentially impossible to achieve, the competitive ceiling is never reached. Unless, of course, you're using a keyboard, Ooh. in which case things are different. With a keyboard, steering inputs are binary. They are either on or off. This range of over 100,000 possible values for steering simply disappears. This yep. makes things much simpler. Mind you, this isn't an advantage, because having the ability to steer by a specific amount is better for precise driving. And this is why the majority of- Okay, controversial statement there from Carl Jobs, basically saying that in the old game, it has always been better to be on a pad. I think a lot of people are gonna disagree. Records on official tracks are performed using a controller, but this simplicity of input values has ultimately produced a new type of strategy that has caused a bit of a ruckus. It's called Low Input Strat, or LIS and it can only be performed on a keyboard. The earliest example of LIS being used is on the track D10 yep. race, which involves taking a shortcut over the left wall near the start. This skip very is famous. very precise if yeah. you want to do it quickly, and therefore it's usually very inconsistent. Very However, a player has found that if you don't press anything at the start of the race, and then just press and hold left at exactly 1.83 seconds, you'll get over the wall every time. This perfectly encapsulates the spirit of LIS. Also, LIS is like, he could just mention khaki. There's so many khaki maps that get a low input strat if it's like a, a few inputs that can make you just beat the map. It, it's very, very common, uh, but only works in like very small situations or in start setups. Yes, it's finding the lowest possible amount of inputs on a keyboard to achieve a goal. The YouTuber Beta produced a fantastic video talking about LIS last year, and if you want more specifics about the history of this style of play, I recommend watching his video as well. But when Beta released his video, this strategy wasn't as controversial as it is today. Better and this shout is because out. back then, it was more or less only used on community-made maps, and it wasn't really being used on official Nadeo tracks. Official Nadeo tracks feature in official track Mania releases and were made by the developers of the game. World records on official tracks are far more prestigious. Now that it has bled into official tracks, it became a problem that needed to be addressed. So let's look at the track A12 speed from Nations Forever. In 2019, the racer Hefest achieved a time of 10.61 seconds, Dude, which is this game looks like Roblox or something. Holy crap. Also, Orchids, can you ping the video in the chat? one of the most famous records in the game's history. Virtual did a fantastic video on the history of this level, out, which you should check out if you haven't already. But this track involves the use of a trick called the Uber Bug, where you hit the side of the track in a very specific way to get launched into the air with a bunch of speed. This trick is extremely precise, and players have spent hundreds of hours playing this level trying to execute this trick. And for the past five years, Hefest's record has remained strong at least until now. Back in 2021, the programming genius Donna Oh, I want to read this. Oh, no, I want to read this. What did it say? <clears throat> zero set speed 50, 5.0 set speed 1, zero press. So these are just the inputs at frames. Are these frames? I think they're frames. The programming genius Donadigo created a Trackmania tool that allowed players to manually create runs frame by frame, otherwise known as a TAS. They could program the perfect inputs and then play them back to create amazing, inhuman runs. Oh. This really isn't a problem in of itself, because any top <laughs> player can look at the inputs of a replay and know if it was performed by a human or a I'll computer. Never get tired of it's watching actually that very deep. difficult to mimic the way a human plays, just like it's difficult for a human to mimic how a computer would play. But recently, players have begun to use this same tool to run scripts that makes a computer play sections of a track millions and millions of times to test different possible input combinations, hoping to find one that is both faster and also requires the oh, least amount of inputs. Things. In January of this year, the player Virtuoso used a script that found a way to beat Hefest's world record by only using seven inputs. All a player had to do was execute seven frame-perfect inputs and the world record would be theirs. Seven frame-perfect inputs is not a lot. Many games Games have world records that require far more than this. Then in April, the player Pastor Grows used the tool to find a six input solution that would beat the record. And I've on the 30th of this. April, he would use this solution to do exactly that. This concept of using brute force and tools to find ways to beat records with only a few inputs raises a couple of concerns. The first is that it fundamentally changes the way people play the game, in that they are no longer actually focusing on driving, but rather yeah. memorizing a few inputs and using the game's time to execute them. Again, 
this is only going to be used at either some start like there's going to be start strats on some maps that might be faster we already know that there's start strats in team 2020 where you can technically gain like 0.5 speed if you accelerate at like a specific time on the countdown and the start of the map uh, there's there's like start strats and stuff this is not going to be used for entire maps it is just not uh for khaki maps or for very short obstacle maps in team nf it might suck like that people can do this but it is what it is i know some people don't mind this and have the attitude <coughs> that it doesn't matter how you play the game the goal should just be to get the fastest time you can and sometimes that's true but sometimes it does defeat the purpose of competition entirely the purpose of a competition is to distinguish players based on their skill levels at yeah. least in theory but if everyone is just memorizing these same six inputs and everyone is getting the exact same time what's the point it reminds me of my own speedrunning game perfect dark there are 20 levels with three difficulties, allowing you to compete in 60 times, mm -hmm. and each time allows you to earn 100 points if you oh, get the record. Rank That's one? a total of 6,000 points available. But in the past, the maximum points you could earn was actually 6,300. That's because there is a bonus level called the Jewel that's outside of the main storyline. When they originally made the ranks, this bonus level was included. On Agent, the world record is 3 seconds, and simply involves turning and shooting once. That's two inputs and none of them are even frame perfect and basically everyone had three seconds because it was so easy it's possibly the easiest oh, world record okay. you could ever achieve but what's the point if everyone has the world record the world record is meaningless and if a level can't distinguish players based on their skill it's a useless level to compete in and because of this the jewel was removed as a level you could earn points on with lis in track mania every single player will just be trying to do the same six inputs and will be achieving the exact same time. This isn't necessarily enough of an argument to ban a technique, but I think it still needs to be considered. On top of this, it's quite literally impossible to know if someone who submits a replay using LIS has cheated. The inputs aren't human inputs by design. I definitely don't think you should call it cheating. Like, my two cents on this is, yeah, I agree with Carl in the sense that you should probably not <clears throat> uh, include maps like this. If everybody has the same time and it's like three frame perfect inputs then people are just not gonna look at that map as like a cool world record to have anyway right all the really really impressive world records you're not going to be able to do this with there's just no way you might do a start strat with three inputs that might save you a little bit of time just like the map you showed earlier but i really don't think that the longer more credible and very cool world records to have they're not really going to benefit from this yeah, no, because you can't use this in the middle of the map anyway, because you need a specific setup for it. So I don't think this is going to be considered cheating. I don't think it's going to be considered banned. If anything, the world records where these inputs are going to be important are just going to be considered less valuable. No human would ever play like this. So you can't use inhuman inputs as a cheat detection method. <clears throat> and because these inputs are so easy to program, you can't know if someone used a tool to make their replay or if they actually did it by hand. And there are other ways to cheat as well. Oh, oh, he's talking about if you actually just play a task back, but they they have they definitely have uh, tools for that, right? Tools have been made that reads information from the game in real time and visually shows you when you need to press the inputs. Now you don't even need to look at the timer. You can just press the buttons when the lines line up. In fact, you could use this tool to play the game without looking at the game at all. That's a new stream idea, guys. We gotta, we gotta try to play the game just looking at this tool. And you, you guys can see the game. I can't see the game. And you tell me if it works. That would be, that'd be pretty fun. Now, of course, using a visual tool like this is already against the rules. But the point is that it's impossible to know if someone has used a tool like this just from the replay alone. Maybe you can sure. try to improve cheat detection by forcing players to use hand cams and show their monitors. But even this isn't really enough to prove no. anything. Players could use a hidden extra monitor to show the visual inputs and you would never know. And funnily enough, a player has already admitted to cheating in this way after achieving a new record with LIS. 
Ultimately, the Trackmania community decided to ban the use of LIS on the main leaderboards. Yes, it does allow people to get faster times and a lot easier, but there are so many downsides to this way of playing that it doesn't seem to be worth including. However, they did say they will create a separate leaderboard in the future for people who still want to submit LAS replays, similar to how the Mario Kart rankings separate shortcut and non-shortcut world records, which That's I smart. think is a nice compromise. The decision wasn't unanimous and some people still think it should be allowed, but the feeling I get is that most people see this as something that will only harm the community and competition in general. And I tend to agree. Every competition has rules and regulations to keep competition interesting. Let's take High Jump for example. Yes, the point is to jump over as high a bar as you can, but that doesn't mean you can put springs in your shoes to jump higher. The Agreed. point is to clear the bar using skill, not tools that go against <clears> the spirit <throat> of the competition, which is why there are restrictions on the types of shoes competitors can wear. When I made the video on the Osu Cheater, who used illegal keyboard settings to gain an advantage, some people wondered why it shouldn't be allowed. And it's the exact same concept. You shouldn't be trying to win using tools or an equipment advantage, because it simply defeats I mean, at the that purpose point, just of the FPS. competition. Thankfully, LAS in Trackmania is so obvious that it's immediately apparent when someone is using it. Therefore, moderation won't be difficult. And they have even imposed a minimum input requirement and won't be accepting replays that use eight or less inputs. This way, you okay. can't simply remember a few inputs a computer gave you. You always have to really play the game. That's what I said, right? This is not going to be important for longer maps because there's no way you're going to uh, do like 200 frame perfect inputs. It's not going to happen, right? And I agree, the maps that I have like three, four, five inputs, I mean, I said they were just going to be less cool to have those records, but if they, if they legitimately are just going to make another leaderboard with that, I'm, I'm okay with that as well. I think this is, <clears throat> this is less of a, uh, of a critical problem, more of like a evolution in, in technology that helps us be better and understand the game better. Um, and it's not, it's just something we have to like slightly deal with. I don't think it's like a, a, a big problem um but cool to see wonder if it's going to happen in the new trackmania game because there's no tools for that as far as i know that's public this situation has led to a really interesting debate in the trackmania community and i'm curious to know what your thoughts are so if you have a different opinion please let us know in the comments thank you so much for watching you legends i hope you're having a fantastic day and i will see you in the next video he called us legends yay chat we're legends um, that's a super cool in video. My over 10 years oh, stop! That was Hello, a super cool video. I really liked it.